will be hosting a coffee conversation with the school's medical director to educate families about the importance of vaccinations. So we're collecting right now voluntarily vaccine cards and we're really pleased with the families that are saying, hey, my daughter's vaccinated, I'm wanting this as a health measure. Students I spoke with say they are fully vaccinated. I'm fully vaccinated. I encourage everybody to get vaccinated. I think it's it'll help stop the spread. Do you feel that that's a very important part of coming back and being together? Yes, I do. I, I think it's important so we can have events, like for our seniors, so we can have a normal graduation, a senior lounge may be back. If you can, everyone should try and get vaccinated because not only are you protecting yourself and helping yourself, but you're really doing a huge thing for the people around you as well as the whole world in general. In the town of Tonawanda, Eileen Buckley, 7 Eyewitness News. Twelve Western New Yorkers are in jail tonight for their alleged involvement in a drug trafficking operation. A year-long investigation called Operation Cataracts found more than seven kilograms of cocaine with an estimated street value of half a million dollars. Investigators say cocaine was being mailed from Puerto Rico to various areas here in western New York. Cash profits were then mailed back to Puerto Rico. Three of the people arrested are charged with operation as a major trafficker, which carries a maximum sentence of life in prison. On that note, a two-month-long program to crack down on violent crime in Buffalo and Rochester will now be extended. For the past 60 days, the Viper program worked to take dangerous people off the street. And in that time frame, the collaboration between local, state and federal law enforcement says it reduced the number of homicides from about seven per month to less than three per month. That's lower than the average number of homicides per month over the last five years. The number of shootings overall also cut in half. We just pick sort of the quiet months to implement this. We went right into the belly of the beast, the worst time of the year to sort of take on this initiative. Well, about 140 firearm arrests were made over the past two months through the Viper program. The task force will continue to increase targeted enforcement, prioritize the arrest of individuals with illegal firearms, and review every gun arrest to decide on what level they should be prosecuted through October. Well, this Saturday marks 20 years since the 9-11 attack on the United States. Nearly 3,000 people were killed in New York City, Washington, D.C., and in rural Pennsylvania when four U.S. commercial planes were hijacked. Among those reflecting ahead of the 20th anniversary of 9-11 are a team of urban search and rescue responders. They were some of the first people to arrive at Ground Zero after the towers collapsed. Tonight at 545, we'll share with you the memories of what they saw that are just so hard to shake. First responders from all over the country rushed to give a helping hand. Our own Katie Morris spoke with six from Buffalo, police officers and firefighters who chose to go down to New York City on their own to help their fellow first responders. One Buffalo fire captain says as soon as he saw what was happening on TV, he knew he was needed. And at the same time, I received a call from my wife and she said, uh, you're not going to New York, are you? And I said, I know that some of my brothers are probably gonna die today and I'll get back to you later. And that's how I left it. Well, all new tomorrow morning, we are remembering that day 20 years ago and hearing directly from the men who risked their lives to help down in New York City. And beginning tomorrow evening, ABC News will air special editions of 2020 with David Muir and Diane Sawyer at 9 p.m. Programming on Saturday morning begins at 7 a.m. and carries through 1 p.m. Still to come here tonight, there's just three days standing between us and the regular season opener. Can you believe it? And if you're going to the Bills game, you might notice the prices of tickets, parking, food, all going up. We're going to take a look at how much cash you might want to plan on bringing to Orchard Park and why. And I'll know at 5.30 tonight, if you're planning a trip to Shays, we'll walk you through what you need to know before you go. But first, another look at 7 Super Doppler, our 7 First Alert weather team continuing to track a line of storms moving across western New York. We'll check back in with meteorologist Andy Parker in just a few minutes. You're watching 7 Eyewitness News on this Thursday. All right, Bills fans, three days until we kick off the new football season. A buzz in the air with both local and national pundits alike saying this may in fact 
be the Bills years. And if you're looking to go to the game, you're likely going to pay a good amount. According to Tick Pick, Sunday's game is the Bills' most expensive home opener on record for the hometown team. The average price for the game right now, $274, which is 83% more than their home opener in 2020, which was 150 bucks. 2019 even lower at $94. 7 Eyewitness News reporter Lilia Wood going in-depth finding out where this price hike comes from. According to team marketing, it would have cost an average family of four $457 to attend a Bills game in 2020. Now we looked into how much it's going to cost this season after a year of not having fans in the stands. Bills Mafia, baby! We are top! Bills Mafia will be spending some bills at the season opener. We don't have a whole lot here, but we do have the bills. That's not expensive. Anybody can come to a game. But with season tickets sold out and single game tickets hard to come by, many fans are turning to the secondary market to get in on the action this season. But that often will cost you. According to the event ticket search engine Ticket IQ, the average secondary market price of an NFL ticket this season is $457. For a Bills game, the average is about $40 cheaper at $414. And while that's lower than nearby NFL cities like Cleveland and Pittsburgh, it's still a $159 increase over what fans here in Buffalo were paying in 2019. Between the gas, hotel, parking, tickets, it's all the souvenirs. But before you even get through the gates, you have to park. Stadium parking is $40 in Orchard Park, which is the same price as parking at MetLife Stadium where the Jets and Giants play. It's five bucks cheaper than parking at Arrowhead Stadium in Kansas City. As many fans know, you can find cheaper parking in neighborhood private lots. Everything has gone up a little bit. I mean, that's the way it is. But if you have a group of people and you split it, it's not all that much money. Now, let's talk food. At Highmark, a 20-ounce ice-cold beer is $11 this season and a hot dog will set you back seven dollars. I'm mostly excited for the soft pretzels and the nachos. A beer at an Eagles game is the most expensive in the NFL at 83 cents per ounce. Here in Buffalo it's 55 cents per ounce. Team marketing adds up a fan cost index each year for a family of four which includes four tickets directly sold through the team parking, two beers, four soft drinks, four hot dogs and two team hats. In Buffalo the fan cost index was $457 last year. The most expensive team to watch as a family, the Las Vegas Raiders at $783. The least expensive, the Cincinnati Bengals at $424. We love Josh Allen and the Bills. Go Bills! But Western New Yorkers say it's hard to put a price tag on being a Bills fan. Buffalo Bills are a huge part of our family and our history, so to do it once a year is definitely worth it. Baby. In Orchard Park, Lilia Woods, 7 Eyewitness News. Thank you, Lilia. You know the fans are ready to go. And don't forget to join us tomorrow night at 730 right here on 7ABC for the kickoff of Leading the Charge. Our sports team will have a full breakdown of all the storylines to watch heading into the Bills season opener against the Steelers. Is it Sunday yet? <laughs> the countdown is on. Here we go. Well, hashtag see it on 7 tonight. Keep those back to school pictures flying into the newsroom. Take a look at this. Brother and sister duo Lincoln heading into pre-K, ready to go. Cassidy in first grade, looking good, heading back to class. We want to see your first day back to school pictures. All you have to do is post your picture and use the hashtag see it on seven. All right, turning now back to the weather on this Thursday night. Sitting in here in the studio, you could just hear the rain rolling through just about 10, 15 minutes ago. It seems like it's gone, gone away, at least from downtown Buffalo, but that was, that was quite the system that rolled through. Yeah, it is, and it rolled is a good uh, good way to terminate that as this was sliding across. It's a long area of rain, very narrow, and it won't last that long, but it is a pounding or driving rain. Let me take you to Skywatch tonight, and we'll show you how this all evolved. This is going back to around the 3 o'clock hour, and you'll see the darker clouds begin to spin. There's actually some rotation on the bottom of those. We were hoping we'd get one of those uh, water spots to drop down right there at the mouth of the Buffalo River, but instead we got 
gotten treated to that rain shield that came down and just kind of put things down. Now we've switched Skywatch. We're looking south. Hamburg, this is what you look like from the city. So often you can be on the beach, look back towards the city. This is the other way. We're hoping we'd maybe get one dropping down and have it backlit or side lit, but no dice just yet. But if you see one, Hashtag see it on seven. I know Jeff just said that, but we'll reiterate it once again. The winds actually switched direction a little bit. It's down to 64 degrees, a lot of 60s on the map, only 170 in Dunkirk. Rochester's out there as well, but within our viewing area, that's where we're at. The winds certainly pushing across the lake. Let's go to seven super Doppler. This is really the important part that kind of holds the key to if you were trying to squeeze in a little patio time, you can kind of write that off in sections of the North towns. You have got a lot of clouds and scattered showers, and that extends now from 20 all the way up so Orleans Genesee County and it looks like Batavia I mean it is knocking on the door here in the next 25 or 30 minutes it rained pretty good in the city Buffalo uh, call it all of the immediate shoreline south towns all the way down to Dunkirk this is now beginning to move inland a little bit uh, some of these cells are beginning to break up so it's not a solid area of rain but there are some pockets uh, looks like Orchard Park West Seneca headed a little further south towards the Boston Hills and here's a line that's about to collide with the shoreline as well this probably holds the most promise if you're hoping Hoping to see a water spout right now between Dunkirk and Westfield. There's one more look at it. We'll widen it out. And actually, our day, we're doing better. Remnants of yet another tropical system sliding up the eastern seaboard, getting them soaking wet. And that is not just a quick shower. It's a long duration rain for them. 64, one of the coolest spots. Alpena, the only one that's a little cooler than us tonight. The warmer temperatures do make a comeback in the seven day, and it's just in time, I think, too. 55 for an overnight low with a few of these showers around. Tomorrow, 67, another cool day. And we are going to find some uh, light shower activity in the morning and then we're going to start to see the atmosphere become a bit more stable even though it remains cool let me bring this full and walk you through your friday and talk about the weekend as well everybody's looking ahead to that first school time weekend for most folks out there this is what we have as we move from Friday morning into Friday afternoon. Uh, this is uh, actually now, I should say, from Thursday night to Friday morning at 12 a.m. And then we slide those areas of rain off. And what we're left with are just some light scattered showers early in the day on Friday. I don't think it amounts to much. As a matter of fact, it kind of dissipates during the afternoon down to a, a bit of drizzle and even some sunshine. But the air remains cool. Here's your Saturday. Now watch those lines. See those white lines switching directions? That sets the stage for some southerly winds to come in and that'll warm us up right on through the day on Saturday. How far? Well, here's the next three days. We hit a pair of sevens on Saturday and Sunday. I didn't say it was dry the whole time. The Bills versus Steelers out there at uh, in, uh, uh, Highmark Stadium, you're going to have a few showers during the course of the pregame right on through the end, and you can see the 80 does make a comeback. I said the 80 because it's only one right now in that seven-day forecast. Back inside. All right, thank you, Andy. Everyone looking towards Sunday. And here at WKBW, we believe giving children books can take them to new places, open their imaginations, fuel big dreams, and plant the seeds for future success. Also help break the cycle of poverty. In just three minutes, we'll explain how you can give a child a book. Welcome back. Well, today is your chance to help get a book in the hands of a child. Febin stepping in now with me. Hello, Febin. Hello, Jeff. Well, today we would love for you to help us out with this, the miss uh, to give a child a book. Yeah, that's right. It's a big campaign. Let me tell you about my favorite book. We kind of highlight this each and every year, Febin. It's called The Book With No Pictures from B.J. Novak. This is a book that encourages reading and makes those who are reading the book, mostly parents, say the craziest things. They say, the rule is whoever is reading this book must say the words that are on the page. And as you see on this picture right here, if you're reading it to kids, you have to say those words and make all those sounds. And in my family, it's a, it's a big, big hit because mostly it just makes me look, you know, sillier than I am, you know, from time to time. The book with no pictures from B.J. Novak from The Office fame, uh, one of the favorites in our family. What's your favorite book, Fevin? Um, my favorite childhood book is definitely The Cat in the Hat. Yeah. Um, that was really fun reading growing up. And also, I don't hear this m uh, much from a lot of people, Corduroy. That was oh, really the bear. Cool. Yes, about the, the bear, bear who yeah. wants to be loved by a human and things like that. So that was a really good book, too. So many good books. So many good books to share. And let's walk you yep. through now how you can give a child a book. Just head to our WKBW webpage. Look for the If You Give a Child a Book icon at the top of the page. Just click on that, and you'll go directly to this page where you can help deliver light into the life 
of a child. Reading, so important, both for themselves, reading together, great family, you know, opportunity just to come together. So we hope uh, you'll join us and donate what you can. That's good stuff. Thanks, Jeff. And up next at 5.30, we're taking a minute or two to talk about a new series we're launching. It's called Two Americas. So what does that mean? And we speak with the search team, defined by what they had to do on 9-11 and what they want the rest of us to do as we head to the 20 years of the attack. We're watching 7 Eyewitness News at 5. Hello, thanks for joining us. We are going to talk about Joe Biden, President Joe Biden, and uh, what he has to say. Um, and that is tonight's breaking news that we're looking for in just a moment. Now, President Joe Biden is, has announced just moments ago that a new vaccine plan has been included in his six part strategy. Now, a mandate that all employers well, more than, with more than 100 workers will be forced to require coronavirus vaccinations or test employees weekly. Now, the mandate is expected to affect as many as 100 million Americans and the roughly 17 million workers at health facilities that received federal Medicare or Medicaid also will have to be fully vaccinated. We will, of course, continue to follow the story and the effect that it will have on the local workforce. And good evening once again. Theater has arrived. Now, it's hard to believe that it has been 547 days since that curtain call, that last curtain call at Shea's Performing Arts Center. And even though the show is going on inside this iconic Main Street Theater, growing COVID numbers have forced the cancellation of Buffalo's annual curtain up and celebration. And some theaters have decided to hold back on the start of the season. Now, ahead of opening night, we caught up with actors of Frozen the Musical tell us that this will be in an unforgettable theater experience. But before you step foot into that theater, there are some changes that you need to keep in mind for you and your family. 547 days later, Shea's Performing Arts Center finally gets to raise the curtain again to bring Frozen to life. We're ready to go and ready to have people go nuts for this show. Robert Creighton plays the handsome Duke of Wesselton. I have a scene at the beginning where I get to meet, where I, you know, Wesselton comes in, not Weaseltown, Weaseltown comes in and meets Elsa and Anna, and he's there with a very clear purpose of wooing the queen and sort of rising above his station. And Creighton isn't just a cast member. He's also a new Buffalonian who now gets to perform in front of his two young children in their new city. My wife's family who grew up in Amherst, she's an Amherst high grad, and to have all her friends and family at the show is going to be really exciting. Playing with him in the limelight is Caroline Bowman, who plays Elsa. Playing Elsa is one of the greatest experiences of my career so far. I love her so much. I love her relationship with her sister. I love telling the story. I love going through Elsa's journey. And get this, we're being told that there are a few nuggets in this show that you didn't get to see in the animated favorite. There's a really special moment in Act 2 where I sing a duet with my sister and it really uh, shows a lot about Anna and Elsa's relationship that is not necessarily shown in the movie. And with that, there's 12 other songs in the musical that nobody has heard yet other than in this stage production. But before you get to see this cool crew, you're going to have to remember a few things. Masks are required at all times for everyone, whether you're vaccinated or not. Concessions will not operate before, during, or after performances. You won't be able to bring your own food or beverage either. And children under two are not permitted. I know my emotions will be high because this is what I love to do most in the world. And the fact that it's been gone for 18 months, but now we're getting to do it again is thrilling. Now this week, 7 Eyewitness News is bringing you a new series. It's called Two Americas. What exactly does that mean? We won't be looking at one side versus the other in these stories, but instead we'll explore different viewpoints and highlight communities that you may not know about. Simply put, it's the America you know and the America you don't. Our own Matt Pearl shares with us what you can expect from Two Americas. There are the parts of the country and our communities that you know. There are also the parts you might not. We've been through so much together, 
Sometimes we see issues differently. But so often, so many of us want to be part of the solution. We want to celebrate someone overcoming adversity. Often, that means starting with real conversation and listening to others. We have been left behind. So we're giving them this education experience of working in elementary buildings. Our new series, Two Americas, will help us better understand our culture. I got a bad name and a bad reputation. Our past. Why we feel the way we do today. This has been something that has happened for years and years and years, and we've been moving forward with this movement for indigenous independence. It's not about changing minds. It's about shining light on places you might not usually visit, on people you might not usually meet. We want a sovereign government that doesn't rely on any outside sources and is able to provide for the needs of our people. The community here is invisible. We'll highlight issues, provide new information, go in depth, and showcase solutions that will lift us all. It doesn't matter if you're rich or you're poor, it's people. We're talking about people, real people. It's different perspectives from the people and places that bring us together. You emerge from this whole thing with hope. Yes, and faith. Super. Better understanding the America you know and the America you might not. That's two Americas. Well, now that you understand what Two Americas is, we want to talk about an issue you might not have expected to become more problematic during the pandemic. Human trafficking. Since 2007, there have been over 9,000 reports of human trafficking here in New York State. And if you look at the number, the number of cases reported, you can see that since 2015,